Hey everybody, uh, today we are going to be working on the fork seals for this bike, 96XR, 250R. Uh, we kind of got them cleaned off here, but you can see there's, it's still pretty nasty, oily. They've been leaking pretty bad. We just went on a trip, kind of test out the bike from all the other stuff, and if you've seen our previous videos, uh, notice this is not as it should be. I have to figure that part out as well. Get everything kind of tightened up as best we can too. Um, as you can see, we have recently found out that this bike had some paint on it, but the power washer helped me start to get that cleaned off. And the seat cover. We removed that old orange seat cover, if you've seen any of the older videos, and uh, revealed this factory one underneath that's in almost pretty much perfect condition. There's a couple little things, a little nail there I need to actually fix. Side's a little worn, but other than a couple little spots, this is a this is a usable perfect. It's too nice, you don't want to tear it up, but everything else is going to be turned, well, everything that should be, should be this headlight and these fork boots are the 96 color. I've previously referred to as purple. I've uh, recently learned it is called Uranus Violet, so that's a fun fact. And we went ahead and got us some uh, Uranus Violet, there we go, some Polysport. Stumbled across, they're listed as blue, you see there. But that's actually the correct color. It matches the seats well. Uh, other parts we got here, the dust seals, part number there, and the oil seals. These came from Rocky Mountain, these came from Parkzilla. Ordered this, realized, didn't realize it was only the, the oil seals and had to get the dust seals extra after. This is just the Honda Fluid. It's recommended, found it on the forums saying you know, what everybody was saying and this is pretty much what it came to. Did the 10 weights at a five weight. If you wanna do a, like your lighter rider, wanna make it a little softer, you they say you can do a five weight and it'll help out a little bit. But me being a larger rider, I want to make sure it's as stiff as I can because it's still probably not going to be much noticeable difference. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, let's see. The first thing we got here. I went ahead and I've tried messing with this before. So we're going to look at it. Got a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter. I believe this is a 17 Phillips screwdriver, which I have this handy one with that thing. So I'm just going to use that. And this is a 22. I believe that's all we need. If I come up with something else, I'll let you know. First step, we're gonna take the uh, 22. You can use a ratchet. I uh, like the impact. You should get a little bit of extension is a bit of a help just because of the cables, and cords, and everything. Just crack these loose. I'm choosing to do those first so you don't forget them before you pull this out of the triple clay because otherwise you have to grab it and you don't want to mar up anything you don't want to you don't want to catch or grab on anything here just messing it up in a vise or however you're planning on doing it you come over here take your number plate off just surprisingly rudimentary uh make sure there's the attachment point here careful don't break your light bulb Figure out how to get your light bulb out. Push and twist. There we go. This comes out. You can see this has been rattle canned. You can tell that there. It's unfortunate, but can't find another Uranus colored one, so we're just gonna run with that and maybe one day we'll see if we can figure out how to buff it out. But now we got all this loose. Triple clamps are easy to get to from here. Uh, we're gonna go up to the next step and we take the front tire off. Go. Take your 10 millimeter, come with these four bolts. Give it all the ooga doogas. Had this part the other day, so everything's well, I say that should be come off real easy here. Just put this new tire on. Some 
top plate will come off. And we'll take the 17. And the take that loose one right there. Use the Phillips screwdriver right here on your speedometer cable if you have one. Assuming all these do, I'm not certain though. Take it all the way out. I don't know if you have to. And it just wiggles apart there. And then wait here and grab it. And we'll just set that on the floor there. Probably take the brake loose first, I mean ideal, but this is pretty easy. Just gonna take this and roll it out of the way so we don't get anything in that one. So you gotta oil it up. I will say this was rather difficult to come out of that axle last time. So uh, putting the oil on there, putting, just lubing it up as usual is a pretty good idea. That's the idea, but a good idea. Now as far as the brake, here so you can see, take these two off, I believe. Yes, those are the 12. That's not the 12. There we go, let it uninstall itself. He said, if you are wondering, it's what your speedometer, uh, what you call this, the uh, speedometer doohickey here. That's what it looks like. I'm going to start its screw back in there just to make sure that doesn't get lost. Break loose there. Another this small. There's an eight. Got about that one, so you need an eight as well, eight millimeter. these back in their holes. It's a good idea to keep up with everything. Swing around there. We'll move up to the tin. And oh, oh I retract that statement. We gotta take that off. Speedometer cable over here with your Phillips screwdriver. That nut does spill on the back. Come on. There we go. There we go. Let that dangle. Put the screw back in so we don't lose that little tiny nut that's not set like it should. Now we're ready. Take the 12. That's the two. Take the 12. Take your triple clamp. I don't think it has to come all the way out. We'll leave it just barely started in there. Should be loose now. Grab somewhere that's not completely slick. There we go. Up here seems to be a good spot. Oh, just a little wiggle it should come right on out. Yeah, so these are just sitting on there. They're held in by the uh, spring, and yeah, we're just gonna leave that there. Now, I will say, that's full of oil. Don't make a mess. It will spill everywhere on you. 
almost done it already. All right, that's it for disassembly there. Oh, that one came all the way loose. Yeah, I'm not saying they're shot, but I mean, they are, so. All right, got on a roll. Jumped ahead here a little bit. Went ahead and did one, put it back on. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, found something real interesting, not surprising to me on this bike anymore. There seems to be a bit of silicone here. Honestly, kind of scared to remove it. That might be structural on this bike. I mean, I've, I've, I've lost hope on this thing being perfect. But she good. So we're not going to mess with that. That may be just stuck on there. It may not. It is now forever part of this bike. I'm not messing with it. So, got that nut off. She just saw probably. Or to the point. Let's pull this down. Went and tried to wash this out, but this is just packed tight, full of mud and uh, I say grease, but it's probably just fork oil that's leaked out and then caked with dirt. All right, just look at that. Look, let's look at it. Obviously, you can't see here. Let me see. I got a light. There we go. We're like those famous TikTok people now. Wow. This, I mean, it's not, I'm not going to say unbelievable. I've learned not to say that on this bike, but just, wow. My handy dandy little hook over here. Oof. You shouldn't need safety glasses pulling a snap ring out. It's flying in my face. This is terrible. So caked in that doesn't even want to move. Gosh. Wow. You see that? You see anything I'm doing here? Nope. Not at all. Awesome. Sorry about that. Need to adjust here. Well, if you see that, then it's there. If not, I might edit that out. Let's see here. Just awful. That ring is... If you can see how nasty, just crusty that is. Man. Oh, most of that cleans off. All right, so... Turn you a little bit here. Show you this method I saw, learned. Here we go. Just take it. Ideally, it's hopefully out of fluid now. I've tried to drain it and set and whatever. Just gonna get a hold of it here. And your hands are all oily. It's real easy. So the second one's probably harder here. Just gonna give it a little. And there she comes. Probably gonna drain some oil out here. Just just broke that seal and there's some more in there. But wow. Just wow. Okay, so you have, if you're replacing bushings, here's your one bushing. This one looks good. As easy as this job is, I'm not gonna worry about it. Scratching down there. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, it, it seems fine. If I'd have got in here and it was messed up or had scratches, I mean, that's smooth as can be. You drag your fingernail across. If anything catches on your fingernail, you see a scratch and if it'll catch, it's, you probably just need to go ahead and replace them. Actually, yes, you should go ahead and replace them at that point. This, I mean, it's not new. That's for certain. She is definitely used, but I mean, it's not scratched or scuffed up. It's just got a little bit of wear on the finish there. It'll be fine for what we're doing here. Just try to wipe everything out. Especially in here. Oh, just 
That is not the consistency of the oil that you want to come out of there. You know what? Let's go get some parts washer. I'll come back to you. Okay. Got this cleaned up. It was nasty and I forgot I didn't pump this one out yet. Uh, so it's completely full of just that black goo. That stuff is bad. I, I, if I changed motor oil and it was that bad, that'd be alarming. This stuff is even thinner than that. So got this cleaned up. This was as crunchy as could be. So uh, this is the part where I'm going to tell you how to do this my way, not the right way. Because I, like probably some of you, don't want to go buy the relatively expensive, uh, where's it at? Seal driver. So you should take these very easily and drive them in kind of like a slide hammer, but for seals. Show you my method. It works. It's what I had. Worked on the other one. That's kind of why I didn't show you that. I was just testing it out. You know, I was more focused on getting it right. This one. I'll bring you along from the journey. Just get this, make sure your fingers clean. Over here, and lube this up. Clean oil. I don't use dirty oil on this. If you're gonna do it half-assed. Well, you got a three-quarter ass some of it, full ass the rest of it, quarter ass other places. You have to average to half-ass. So go full ass here. Smooth that up and then. But just the oil first, the oil seal, you see, uh, you can see that there. It's the flatter, fatter, thicker one. It's got a spring in the back. Very carefully. You don't want to mess it up. You don't want to tear it. Just kind of get it slid over the top there. Bring it on down in. I use this because it's not, it is a screwdriver, but it's not pointy. It's flat on the ends. Try to get it push down in there a little bit, square it up, okay, then I got this inch and a half, it's one and a half, uh, schedule 45, PVC, I don't, don't know where to do with the rest of it, there it is, you can read that there, do you know PVC, schedule 40, not the right size, but it's the right size for me. Kind of slot it in here, which it's kind of tight, can't really see. And make sure you kind of sand it off the edges so it's super smooth. Don't want to scratch anything. See it's split. Hopefully you can see that there. Nope, cannot. Let me crank you up here just a hair. So we're working on the top now. All right, so pop that on there and you can see the slit. Go. Bring it down. Bring this up. I'm not going to go all the way. Yeah, a little bit. It's not actually trying to use the cylinder itself. It's just more of a, it's more of a weight. So you just grab this. I'm trying to grab it as tight as I can. This does slide, so you'll see it's. Breaking the above us here. Oh, you hear the thud like that. And you have slipped all the way down here. Both hands is what I did earlier there, make it a little tighter. Bang clamp or something would be great. But I don't have that, so that's what we're using here. Say so this ain't the right way, this is my way. My way is the way that I have with tool, the tools that I have. Maybe some of you can relate. All right, let's get our preface. Right way? No. My way? Yep.
far out of the way this time. Bring this over for it to go. Oh, there we go. All right, the rag, that's a huge help. Huge help. One side's not quite going down. I think that's good. Two more bumps. Just to make sure that's a, a little lip. We're just a hair past it, but we just needed a hair from the first try, so. Alright, now, it seems I've gotten junk back in here. Alright, one more time. Okay. Let's clean this thing up. All right, so I just checked the film there, and uh, turns out, let me see, can I get you guys pointed back right? Yeah. Just checked the film, and I lost putting it all back together. I, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, maybe a probably telemarketer call or something shut the camera down anyway the all I did you saw me I was getting the dust seal we redrove the oil seal back on that dust seal once I got that oil uh, the oil seal dro uh, drove completely on this time a little bit further which is if you look in there there's a, just a little bit of a ring like a kind of a, just a little shelf and it sits right there so if you once you get just past that lip it's when it's good well once that was down you slid the oil ring on and you just kind of I actually pushed it down and just used the uh, use this little thing here, just kind of laid it down, very any no pressure at all, just on something smooth, and dropped the ring in the spring, and it clicked right in. So that was super easy. Uh, then just to, it was just a reverse. Went ahead, put the boot on, slide the spring in, hold this back, put the jam nut all the way on, just my finger. Uh, put the aluminum cap, put it all the way on, take that, uh, grab this, you grab here, pair of channel, or vice grips, so, I'm sure you can see, bring it down here, sorry about that, bring that down, grab it onto there, so it's just, there's enough room here I can play, uh, put my ratchet socket on here, you know, like this, tightened, tighten this, using this, holding the rod, just, just a little snug just to make sure it's all the way seated. And then held on to this and brought the jam nut all the way tight up against it. And then from there, it's, that's basically where we left off. Luckily, I happened to check the camera. So that's where we are. So, so we're going to pull this up. And we'll bring you guys down here. 
Okay. Now we just grab this. Make sure we have everything on. Uh, the boots on. The other side, you had to get the uh, speedometer cable with this caliper bracket or caliper tube hose, whatever bracket. It's already on there. Slide it on up. Tight fit, so you just kind of have to wiggle it till you get it right. Okay, and uh, I forgot to mention coming apart. I'm going to make sure when they're going back together that it's exactly the same place here. You can't, I know you're not able to see it, but there's a uh, just the tiniest little bit, enough to say that it's the actual tube, not the, uh, not the nut. The tube itself is just enough up to say that it's above, but that's not even a measurable amount really. Okay, here we go, Line back over here, back in with the 12, that's the 10, Check those by hand once we get it down. Now it should be time for the wheel to go back on. Have the axle. Slide it through. And just tighten the running the threads in on the axle here not tight but just enough to get it to hold it in place you want to make sure as you're getting the speedometer thing in there's a down here there's an ear a tab on it as well as one on the axle or on the torque tube just want to click that down this black one should be underneath the silver one if that will make it super simple for you there Slide this back in. Dump the bike on your head. <laughs> All right. Fully seat that in just a second. Let's get the rest of this set up. 17. Square, steady, arrow. Make sure that's the same orientation as when you started. If I remember correctly, it's up for me. Back to the eight. Is that the ten? That's the ten. Ooh, that was 
That bolt's been taken out a couple many too many times. So we got our four bolts, we put this in now. What's this thing? Let me show you here. This is the little groove. You can see this. The groove there, that's what goes in the screw, so it sets in, just kind of gets you a feel for how far up or how deep it needs to go in. A little lock in screw there. Move over here to the brake. I believe I forgot to wrap it around. Ideally, you should be able to get this back on if you haven't pulled the brake lever. Slide right out of in. Ow. Oh, so press your finger. It's stuck in the spoke. Yep, stick those in. finger tight in there. Put your little brake on. Which, by the way, if you look up here at these uh, bank lamps, looks like it'll be fine with the tire. As far as not hitting anything, it's above the tire. If you put it down here where it's supposed to be, it might cause an issue, but we have altered it in a way that it works. if you get the right size on the socket. Just thin little brackets. Make sure you don't get those too tight. Come on. Impact turn down there. All right, so now we need to go up here and tighten these. Do not do this with an impact. All the sketchy things I'll advise you to do, this is not one of them. Ah, that's one thing I forgot. I learned last time. Leave the top clamp a little loose. Makes this way, way easier. All right, right now it just stops there. I just give it a little, good solid little thrust, whatever you want to call that. We can let the back of the support down there. It's more difficult when I have my cables. All right, oh, that's actually super down already. Oh, we already have that one right now. 
there and give it a little, just a little something there. I'm gonna tighten these back down. Before we forget, we we'll put our top clamps back on. Be a good time to straighten these out too. All right, so we're gonna try to bolt to the inside as well. That's going to be real difficult. We're not going to do that on this one. We're going to try it to the back. Up here, not as big of a deal. Going to hide them. Oof, those bolts are barely long enough. Technically not really. Gotta make sure there's a seam on the boot here. I don't wanna set that seam up so it's straight so it's not having some kind of twist or anything weird to it. Good. Good enough. Peace. Do the same with this one. Go to the back. Just this egg, you should be able to see a little better. Works. Feels good. Just left the head thing on. I see there's also a rubber gasket here. There should be two, but should get all this. We made the headlight cable super short. I believe it only goes on here one way. There we go. Gotta fight the spring. Get that seal back on there. And grommet back around. Just make sure it's good and sealed up. Line up the holes. At the bottom those little bushings. These cheesy little straps back on here. Get this down. I'll make you watch that.